Evening gamers. Oh, shit, it's too high. Oh no. There we go. Right. Don't like too much of a fucking idiot now. <sighs> right. Hello. People don't see me in about a week, because um, I took a day off yesterday. Didn't tell anybody I was going to do that, but I did. <laughs> um, I'm probably going to do a Pokemon stream on, like, Wednesday or something to, you know, to untake the day off. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I haven't made a conscious decision on whether I'm going to do that yet or not, but probably am. Probably. Either way, this is this is the Paladin stuff we've been doing over the last sort of like three weeks, I think at this point it must be. I think, I think this is like stream five or six, maybe. Um, now, we've sort of been through a good portion of the subclass. I think we've done all of them. I'm fairly certain um, Oath of Freedom, which is of my own construction, is... <sighs> yeah, I'm fairly certain Oath of Freedom is... Uh, and I, I want to try and do something with Oathbreaker, but I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with it. I want to do something substantial, though. But uh, this is what I got got a fair, amount, a fair amount of neat stuff I'd, I'd like to think uh, buh, 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 buh. So let's have a look at what we looked what we did last week because I've taken a quick scan of this but um, this is what we started on last week uh, as, as uh, alongside doing oath of treachery uh, yeah I was gonna run my own tenets of treach treachery in my in my own time because this wouldn't be particularly interesting doing it on stream. But yeah, I mostly went in and just made Oath of Treachery way cooler. Um, and then... Um, uh, Icon of Deceit was revealed to be my favourite feature in in 5th edition, because it's super cool. <laughs> you um, emrakul the promised end, everybody who tries to hit you, and... That's really cool. <laughs> Full on, like, Emrakul the Promised End. It's good shit. Yeah, we got up to Oath of Freedom, which is, you know, kind of like that rebellion, kind of more like chaotic good paladin kind of angle. Uh, spells we gave them, gave them Bless and Heroism. Makes sense. Misty Step, Pass Without a Trace. Pass Without a Trace, maybe, meh, I don't know, but Misty Step makes sense. Beacon of Hope, definitely. Sending, meh. Freedom Movement, Freedom is in the name, like, yeah. Uh, and uh, Mordenkainen's Private Sanctum, I like that, also that spells really good. Uh, far Step and Holy Weapon, yeah, like Far Step, you get Misty Tip. And Holy Weapon is just kind of like a generically good Paladin spell. Um, or just generically good spell, period. Holy Weapon's really good. As an action on your turn, you may speak a call to action to a creature within 30 feet of you. If the creature can understand you and hear you, it must make a wisdom saving throw against your power. Can you, I should say hear you and understand you. Or can hear and understand you. It must make a wisdom saving throw against your power and spell save DC. On a failure, it is charmed by you. If it was hostile to you, uh, it is charmed till the end of your next turn. If it was not host hostile to you, it is charmed for one hour or until you or another... Um, you or one of your allies takes a harmful act action against a creature. Uh, okay, yeah, the condition ends. Early, condition uh, ends early if you or your allies take a harmful action against the creature. A creature charmed. By you in this way is your ally and follows your spoken orders, which you must give as a part of your action to use this feature. Additionally, a creature that fails at saving throw has the words you speak burned into its mind. The target remembers your words to the letter and is and is deeply moved by them in a manner the DM chooses. Once you have used this feature, you must complete a short or long rest before you may do so again. Uh, and then you can use it more times as you gain pally levels. Uh, 
channel divinity channel divinity freedom's cause as a bonus action in return you shall an inspiring cry choose up to six willing creatures you can see or hear within 60 feet of you those creatures can expend a number of hit dice up up to half your proficiency bonus for gaining hit points as if they're expended as part of a short rest fairly simple not particularly good like it's not that great but I suppose um, so it could be um, a creature adds your charisma modifier. Channel Divinity Rebels Maneuver. This action in turn you up to six other willing creatures you can uh, that can see or hear hear you within thirty feet. Those creatures can use their reaction to move at half their speed into spaces you choose before making a single weapon attack against a creature within their weapon's reach. I guess within their reach, I think it's probably appropriate there. And that's as far as we got with that. We didn't we didn't really get any further, but that's okay. Um, because we need an or we need a seventh level aura. We need an eleventh level sort of flavory feature. Uh, we need a fifteenth level feature, and then we need a twentieth level transformation ability. That's kind of the um, either the the eleventh or the fifteenth level feature should be some kind of evolution to some kind of improvement to inspire uprising, whatever that is. Like um. Hmm. <sighs> or of freedom. Hmm. Let me just move this tilt down just a little bit. Hmm. So obviously it's gonna be called Aura of Freedom or Aura of Revolution or something like that. But as for its effect, like I don't, I don't want to do anything generic. Like oh yeah, allied creatures that start their turn near you get ten feet of speed. Like ooh wow. You know, like, it's very boring. Hmm, I guess like, I could, um, maybe they gain advantage on ability checks and saving throws made against being pushed, pulled, being moved against their will, um, grappled, restrained, or knocked prone. That could be cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I like it. Not 17th level, 7th level. Yeah, oh, fuck's sake. Um, yeah, 7th level, your holy aura protects you and your allies. Uh, let me go read, like, Aura of Alacrity real quick. Uh, also, Aura of Alacrity is the exact fucking thing. <laughs> um... Um... No, not Aura of the Guardian. Aura of Treachery, maybe? No. Oath of Vengeance. Aura of Aversion. No, that's... I'm, I'm looking for... Aura of the Sentinel.
Let's look at Oath. Let's look at Aura of Devotion. There we go. Right. Let's just grab that that sort of text so that it can be rejigged. Allied creatures within the radius of your aura's aura of protection gain advantage on ability checks and saving throws made to resist or escape from effects that would cause them to be to be grappled, restrained, knocked prone or moved against their will. Is there anything else that reduces your speed to zero? I think it is just those. Yeah, this is cool. This works. I like it. So, Aura of Freedom. Then we need... So... 11th... 15th... And... 20th. Some kind of like Avatar of Freedom... become an avatar of freedom. Let me just like copy the the text from um Let me go read Living Legend. This is interesting. Liv Living Legend lets you expend a fifth level spell slot to, to activate it a second time. I suppose Living Legend is not really that substantial. Like, Living Legend is like kind of minor stuff. Um, effect ends early if you're incapacitated or die. I don't think that's really necessary at all like obviously it ends if you die and incapacitated like that just seems just like you're kicking them in the teeth really I activate my awesome 20th level ability and then the mind then you fail your saving throw against mind blast and then you you not only are you mind blast and you lose your turn but you also lost your previous turn because you activated an ability that did nothing in the end which is funny enough that fucking sucks uh, that's not fun. Um. Words of inspiration to an uh, creature. And there is. I need to mute some notifications. Things are making noises and it's annoying me. Give 
give me just a second, folks. Right. Sorry about that. I had to mute some notifications because they were being annoying. I had creature right. What? Let me let me go read freedom's cause. It gains the benefits of your rebels. So every turn you get to choose one of your buddies to use their reaction and move up to half their speed and, and attack a guy. Which is really good. <laughs> um, um Right. Maybe some kind of um, 20th level spell, uh, like, like a spellcaster kind of. So you're meant to be kind of like a beacon of inspiration for your allies. What does that represent? Because this here makes a lot of sense. Ooh, hang on. Whenever an allied... there. Every time somebody starts um, starts to turn in your aura of protection, you can spend a hit die and heal them. You can, you can first level cure wound somebody at the top of every turn. Which is very, very good. But I guess that's kind of the point. Hmm. I kind of like it, though. I think both of these together are probably enough on their own, but... Yeah, honest, honestly, both of these on their own, more than enough. I think just these two are a bit, like... Neither of them are, like, crazy, ultra, super cool, but... That's kind of the point, you know? You're an Oath of Freedom Paladin, you're not, like... You're leading the charge, but... You're leading the charge because you're the best at leading the charge, not because you're, like, some valiant leader or whatever um you're like i'm the guy for the job because i'm good at talking and that's kind of it yeah hmm
mass uprising. Beginning at 11th level, the words inspire action. When you sue, when you use your Inspire Uprising feature. Let me target any number of creatures. So mass uprising is you can talk to a crowd of 60 people and just, you know, you, know, you get a big crowd of like 30 people around you and you just turn all of them into your allies for an hour. Or you're in a fight, you're, you're, you know, and in that crowd there are like three enemy guards. You spend, um, for each additional, um, Trying to maintain a train of thought. So, the, you have a crowd of like 10 people around you, including two hostile guards that are walking towards you at speed. And it's like a crowd of 20 and two hostile guards. You use this feature, you expend two uses one to target the guard and the entire crowd, and one extra to target the other guard who are both hostile to you. Um, and you, you know, the DM makes a bunch of saving throws, or makes like one saving throw for the whole crowd, or makes three saving throws, or whatever. Um, and then you know, the, the the results pan out as they do. You can you can turn like most of the crowd into your allies, and say like, and or maybe the guards succeed this. Maybe, maybe, maybe the the you don't even target the guards, right? You spend one use and you just affect all the crowd, and they're like, these guards are trying to trying to qu qu trying to quell the rebellion, keep them away from me, you know, like like no orders to hurt them or anything like that. Just get in their way, you know, like just dogpile on them and just hold them to the ground, um, whilst I make my glorious escape, or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, this, this ability is super cool. Uh, this, this actually makes this ability super fucking sick. You again, you're used to on a long rest, right? Let me do that, because this ability is really strong. Um, you should not, you should be getting the back on a long rest. This ability is, like, very, very strong. It's very, very cool, though. So, you know, it's pretty fucking sick. And we need a 15th level feature for the uh, for the Oath of Freedom. So 15th level, what do you have? You have almost all your spells. Um, hmm. So, maybe you can, hmm, maybe some benefit to like the first, the first round of combat does feel like something where, um, ooh, yeah, hang on, I don't have a name for this yet, but, um, 
when you reach 15th level. I guess it could just be called Leave the Charge, right? the next round it's allied creatures and hostile creatures Within 60 feet, they can see or hear you when you use this feature. Let me just see how the, the turns are structured. So I think I'm fairly certain I'm getting across what this is meant to do. So all your allies go first, and then all and then all the enemies go in the first round of combat. That is how that's supposed to go. Which is quite powerful. Um, like generally speaking, that's very powerful. Hmm.
put it there. Into two initiative groups, the allied initiative and the enemy initiative. The allied initiative contains each creature allied to you, once the enemy initiative contains each creature hostile to you. If a creature changes its allegiance before its turn, move it to the appropriate initiative group. Greetings, Reuben. Welcome in. I, sh I shall I shall hydrate myself. I did just finish a whole cup of tea anyway, but no, it's vinegar. It's vinegar, pussy. During the first round of combat, let me let me let me go see. Like, let me go find the official wording for how initiative works in 5th edition. Obviously we all know how it works. I want to see how it's worded. Roll initiative by making a dexterity check. Uh, the order of combat. The initiative determines the or the order of turns during combat. When combat starts, each minute. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Creatures in the Allied Initiative. <laughs> I do have some rum, um, but there's not much of it left and I've got nothing to put it in, so. And um, spirits taste like absolute shite neat, so um, you put them in things. Um, during the first round of combat, that doesn't sound like a good idea. <laughs> During the first round of combat... <laughs> oh, that says leading the carge. During the first round of combat... Sadly, it doesn't automatically make a poll. It just suggests one, I'm afraid. Oh, 
Alas, no it is not, it is a dictatorship. Ah, there we go, Kitty has started a poll by the looks of things. I, I literally have like, this much, in like a massive fuck off bottle, like over there. Uh, it's probably probably uh, equates about a shot. Using e uh, followed by creatures in the enemy. Using each creature's initiative. Otherwise, treating the initiative as normal. Right. This ability is weird and probably doesn't work in the way that I want it to, but its its effect is very, you know, reasonably clear. Basically, the idea is there are, you know, there's um yeah, well, let's say that there. Is, hang on, let's. I'll, I'll make. I mean, like a box or something. <laughs> For fuck's sake. I'll go get it in a second. Fine. So. Say in a combat, you have the pally, a rogue, and a wizard, and then there, are, there then there is uh, an enemy beholder, uh, some some bandits, and a mage. Um, the pally gets a nine, the rogue gets a twenty-two, and the wizard gets a fifteen. The beholder gets a twelve. Uh, the bandits get a 19, and the mage gets um, a 5. Instead of going into normal initiative, which would be uh, rogue, bandits, wizard, beholder, pally, mage, it instead goes uh, rogue, wizard, pally, bandits, beholder, mage. Right? Because these are all enemies, and they'll be sorted into their correct, you know, they'll, they'll be sorted up like this. And then... The allies will be sorted up like this, and then at the very, very end, they'll be shuffled in as normal. So, like, um, uh, that'll go in there, that'll go in there, and then top of round two, they'll just shuffle into normal initiative. Is that, does that make sense to people, I think, is, is the primary kind of thing there. Does that make sense? Um... Hmm. Yeah, so the whenever you roll initiative, you choose to lead the charge. If you do, you split the initiative order into two initiative groups, the allied initiative and the enemy initiative. The allied initiative contains each creature allied to you, whilst the enemy initiative contains each creature hostile to you. If a creature changes its allegiance before its turn, move it to the appropriate initiative group. During the first round of combat, creatures in the allied initiative act first followed by creatures in the enemy initiative, otherwise treated, treating the initiative as normal. At the beginning of the second round of combat, combine the allied and enemy initiatives, returning to normal initiative for the, re uh, for the rest of the encounter. The word initiative has lost all meaning over the course of those three paragraphs, but I think it does make sense. Like, I think some rando, without that explanation, can read this and be like, okay, no, I think I get it. Um, but I will, like...
I'm going to red text this, like, explanation. And, um, yeah, I guess I'm going to go get this bloody, this bloody rum then, aren't I? Fuck me. Right. Hang on. It's just over there. Oh. This is the remainder the remainder of my Christmas present. As you can see, there is not much left in there. I'm not sponsored by Captain Morgan. Uh, it is, yeah, I haven't had a haircut in about three years, give or take. I mean, if I take the tiniest sip, it'll be gone. Ah, oh, shit. This, this don't want to open. Need something to... Hang on. Is it... Can you hear it? Me trying to fucking open it. It's not happening. Presumably it's because it's been... It's sticky and it has been closed for several weeks. Because I haven't had any... Anything to mix the damn thing with. So it may seem... Fuck. I don't think this is going to happen, people. Right. Yeah, this shit isn't... This, this, this is not opening. I'm afraid. So, sorry, poll people. Greetings. Pretty, pretty decent, pretty decent. Oh. 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 Right. Either way. The only thing left on here to do, I think, is the Oathbreaker. Now, I'm not sure how I want to handle the Oathbreaker. Whether I want to keep it as is, or I want to change it. Um, not 100% sure exactly how that's going to go. But, um... We shall see. I'm going to go look at the Oathbreaker. I'm probably going to take a break in about five minutes, by the way, because I've been taking my breaks obscenely late. Like, I've been taking them at, like, half six. So I'll probably, I'm probably going to take a break in about five minutes or so. I'm going to go through Oathbreaker and find the things I want to change. Um, and find the th Or find the things I want to keep, I think, is more going to be the case here. Cause it's going to be... It's mostly going to be things I want to change. So the Oathbreaker is from the DMG and is mostly quite janky. Some dark ambition or serve an evil power, whatever light burn the penance heart has been extinguished, only darkness remains. Very edgy. A paladin must be evil and at least third level to become an Oathbreaker. The, the paladin replaces the features specific to his or her sacred oath with Oathbreaker features. You get Channel Divinity, Control Undead. Um, it's kind of like a slightly worse version of the f of the 14th level Necromancer feature, which is pretty gnarly, actually. <laughs> That's, um... Wow. What CR is a Lich? Let me just check, because it is limited by challenge rating compared to level, but I'm fairly certain... Okay, no, a paladin cannot control a lich with this.
Hmm. It's not super great. I don't like this. I'm just going to cut this. Actually, in, no, no, I say that no, this, this does, it doesn't make sense, I suppose. I just think, I just think Oathbreaker isn't really very interesting, you know? You're either like a paladin who's, you either change your oath, right? You, 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 you change the oath that you've sworn, or you just stop being a paladin altogether, right? You, you like go and become a different class. You become like a warlock or whatever. Oh, sweet. Nice. I, I did not. That's pretty cool. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I, I, I think I'm, I'm going to, I'm not going to cut Oathbreaker, but I'm definitely going to step away from it for now whilst I think of exactly what I want to do with it because I'm not really a fan of it. I think it's conceptually very cool, but I think it's very generic in its sort of it's kind of just like oath of conquest but additionally evil so yeah it's uh i don't know i i think i'm not gonna fiddle around with it on stream i think i'm much more likely going to take a look and decide what i want to do with it in my own time because the main thing I've sort of specified with Paladin Oaths in in the change is Oath Violations. But, um... But, yeah, I'm not sure. But yeah, so I'm probably gonna gonna take my break here anyway, because I need to go grab some food. Uh, I will be gone probably no more than ten minutes or so. So um, when I go back, I shall. Um, I'm probably gonna go through and make some edits to the stuff I've already got, uh, and then uh, then try to scan through and um, uh come up with some more paladin oaths if necessary um fiddle with the things i've already got basically just going to go through and like run through everything that i've changed and everything that i've done but yeah i'll be back very shortly so yeah
It's a me, Mario. I deceived you. It is not actually Mario. It's me. Hello. My deception is considerable. It's assessment time. And uh, that means that we're going to read through basically everything and see all the dumb shit I did and fix it. I'm going to also take a drink. Okay, so... Okay, right. That's not necessary text there. Right. You have a pool of healing power with hit points. Um, uh, a pool of healing power with hit points as shown on the lay on hands pool of the lay on hands pool column of the paladin table. Reserve of healing power, comma with hip, with an with uh, with a number of hit points as shown in the lay on hands pool column of the paladin table. As a bonus action on your turn, you can touch a creature and expend an amount of hit points from the pool up to your paladin level plus your charisma modifier, or the amount remaining in the pool, whichever is lower. The target regains that many hit points. Then, if the target is prone, you may pull it to its feet. No action required. Should you target a creature with zero hit points with this feature, you must expend your action rather than your bonus action to do so. Your pool is replenished whenever you complete a long rest. This feature has no effect on constructs and undead. Blah 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 blah. Spellcasting. Again, spellcasting is spellcasting. We don't need to look at that. Channel Divinity, you gain two cha Channel Divinity options determined by your choice of Paladin Oath, shown at the end of the class description. When you use your Channel Divinity, you can choose which option to use. You must then finish a short or long rest to use your Channel Divinity again. Divine Smite, whenever you hit a creature with a melee weapon attack, you may cast a spell with a Smite tag as a part of that attack, uh, affecting the, the target with the spell. Uh, right, Divine Sense. As an action, you can open your awareness to detect such forces. Until the end of your next turn, you know the location of any aberration, celestial, elemental, fey, fiend, or undead within 60 feet of you that is not behind total cover. You know the type of any being whose presence you sense, but not its identity. Within the same radius, you can also detect the presence of any place or object that has been consecrated or desecrated, as with the Hallow spell. This red text section is something I'm potentially going to scrap, um, because it might just be too good, or too abusable, more likely. As an action, you may, uh, additionally, you may, uh, or alternatively, you may use your action to gaze into the heart of a creature you can see within 10 feet of you. You learn the target's alignment, uh, as well as its creature types and tags, unless it makes a charisma saving throw against your paladin's spell save DC and succeeds. You know whether the creature resisted, resisted and if it succeeded or failed on its saving throw. The target can see and sense your intrusion. You know what? Fuck it. I like this. This is cool. It's really good. Like, it's it's obscenely strong because you just kind of take a dump over... Like, oh, are you a doppelganger? Yeah, he's a doppelganger. Kill him. But, um... I think it could potentially use some work, but um, I do like it. I think it's cool. I think the alignment is probably the most um, thing, but I think this I will red text and come back to this in my own time. 
Aura of Protection, you're ex you exude a holy aura in a 10 foot radius sphere that around you that shields your allies from harm. No one allied creature within your aura must make a saving throw. The creature gains a bonus uh, to the saving throw equal to half your charisma modifier. Uh, your aura spreads around corners and is suppressed whilst you're incapacitated. At 18th level, your aura increases to 30 feet. Sure thing, I'll say, thanks for stopping around. Stopping around, stop, stopping by, whatever. Ugh. Indeed, thank you very much. As an action, you may touch a creature, expending any number of hit points from your lay on hands pool. The target regains that many hit points. Once you've expended hit points from your lay on hands pool in this way, you cannot do so again until you complete a short or long rest. Additionally, as a bonus action, you may touch a creature, expending 10 hit points from your lay on hands pool to cure the target of one disease or neutralize one poison affecting it. You can cure multiple diseases and neutralize multiple poisons with a single use of lay on hands, expending hit points separately for each one. I move this mainly because diseases are already like ridiculously easy to just circumvent entirely in 5e. It, like, you know, le lesser restoration is bad enough. Um, but the fact that lay on hands is not even like a second level spell slot and you can just do it from level one, that fucking sucks. I feel like, like, part of me really wants to, like, separate, like, make lesser, keep lesser restoration, obviously, because it's a cool spell. But make it so that there is a spell of, probably also of second level, called Cure Disease, which has a material cost. A small one, but a material, like, it has a cost. Of, you know, even if it's a cost of, like, 25 gold, it's still something of substance. Mainly for me, it's the idea that, like, a priest from the Monster Manual, uh, if there is, if there's one of those in your town, nobody in that town is ever really going to suffer from disease. You know, you, you, you have, like, a small town or whatever, and if there's a priest in it, well, someone's got typhus, now they don't. I cast Lesser Restoration, you, lo you no longer have typhus. Um... Yeah, I just think it, I just think that's kind of dumb. It, it it's it really kind of removes the um, kind of the magic, I suppose, from or it, it adds it adds too much magic, I think, to a lot of things. Where it's like, oh yeah, this this entire town was wiped out by disease, but oh lol, a fifth level paladin just waltzed on in and cured half the town in a day, and the other half of the town the day after, you know, just cured everyone you know he spent like a week here and just cured everyone no cost and then just left if there was something to that you know there was um there was a real price to um to curing a disease outside of five points of lay on hands or a second level spell like if you're a 10th level character being able to waltz into a town and just cure the entire town of some deadly disease Sure thing, you're like a 10th level character. But up until that point, that shit should be hard. You know? It should be challenging. Um, especially bloody clerics. Aura of Courage. Allied creatures within the radius of your aura of protection cannot become frightened, and any frightened creature that starts to turn within the area can remake its saving throw against the effect, and then condition on a success. Now, I don't think this technically... Oh, it does specify that they cannot become it doesn't make them immune to the frightened condition. Yeah, so no, this does actually work. That's fine. And Cleansing Touch and Improved Divine Smite I didn't touch because they're cool. I like them a lot. Ugh. Oath of the Ancients. Touch of Regrowth. Whenever you restore one or more hit points to creatures with a spell or paladin feature, you may cause any number of those creatures to instead gain temporary hit points equal to half the amount of healing they would have received, which lasts until the which lasts until the end of its next turn. Whilst a creature has these temporary hit points, it gains resistance to all damage. You may grant a number of creatures temporary hit points equal this. 
You may grant a number of creatures temporary hit points in this way equal to your charisma modifier, after which you must complete a long rest to do so again. This ability is very, very powerful. But I think, like, at low levels, it's not super crazy. Um, like, realistically, what you want to do is give somebody, like, one point of lay on hands with this, right? Um, and just give them one temporary hit point. Or I suppose you'd have to give them two, because otherwise, I think rules is written one. If you half one, it does round down to zero, I think. I'm, I'm not actually sure. Might put minimum of one temporary hit point. There we go. Which last... Actually, no, we should, we should really hamper their ability to spend one. Uh, and then they take half damage from the next instance, right? So, um... The dragon is about to fly down from the mountains and ble breathe fire all over the pie. You see the the wizard has got, like, his hit point, you know, he's like 50 maximum hit points, you know, running out. Like, the dragon is easily going to do that, and then some. You run over and give him, you know, like, 10 lay on hands or whatever. Or probably not even, even one. Um, or two. And you give, you give the wizard resistance to the damage. Um... Nature's Wrath. As a bonus action, you've got Spectral Vines to spring up and reach for a creature within, th uh, within 30 feet of you that you can see, restraining it. At the end of the turn, the target can make a strength saving throw, breaking free on a success. On a failure, the creature remains restrained until the end of your next turn. When the condition ends, the vines vanish. So, at minimum, you use this and give yourself advantage on your, on your attacks, right? You use it on your turn, you give yourself advantage. Um, and then they make the save. So, even if you whiff this ability, even if you whiff it, it still did something, right? Um, even if it didn't use a huge amount. Turn the Faithless is the same. You tell Fae and Fiends to fuck off. Aura of Warding, you and other friendly creatures on the right And there is Allied creatures in the radius of your Aura of Protection reduce damage taken from spells by an amount equal to your Charisma modifier. Uh, when you reduce to zero hit points and are not killed outright, you can just drop to one hit point instead, blah 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 blah. Whenever you grant a creature temporary hit points with your touch of rebirth feature, choose a different creature you can see within 30 feet of the original target. That creature gains an equal number of temporary hit points as per your, your touch of regrowth feature. Doing so does not expend a use of your touch of regrowth. So, but yeah, basically you can double up with touch of regrowth. This ability is is very strong, um, and then Elder Champion is the same, and it's still very very good. Oath of Conquest, you become an ill rigger, because hell yeah. Whenever you score a critical hit on an attack roll against a creature, that creature suffers additional psychic damage equal to 2 plus your paladin level that becomes frightened of you until the end of your next turn. Neat. As an action, you force each creature of your choice you can see within 30 feet of you to make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, it becomes frightened of you for one minute. And they can make their turns. And on a success, unless the target is immune to the frightened condition, its speed is halved until the end of your next turn. When you make an attack roll, you can use your channel divinity to gain a plus 10 bonus to the roll. You... yeah, so this is kind of boring, but it's neat. Aura of Conquest. Creatures frightened of you within the radius of your aura of protection have their speed reduced to zero and take psychic damage equal to half your paladin level if they start their turn there. This is cool. I actually... yeah, I really like the... you know, like this... this aura of a menace. It's cool. Overwhelming menace. Any creature within 30 feet of you that can see you suffers disadvantage on saving throws made against the frightened condition. Because you're real spooky. I like that. I say this, and I, I made most of this. Like, I'm just patting myself on the back. But, you know, whatever. Fuck it. I'm going to pat myself on the back if I want. Fuck you. Um, <laughs> a scornful rebuke. Uh, whenever a creature hits you with an attack, unless you are incapacitated, that creature takes psychic damage equal to your charisma modifier. I think that is from base conquest. Uh, you can transform resistance to all damage. 
you get an extra attack, and you crit on a 19 or a 20. Sick. That's fine. I think that's unchanged. Right, Oath of the Crown has a weird ability. It has Victory of the Sovereign. Whenever an allied creature you can see within 30 feet of you reduces a hostile creature to zero hit points, you gain temporary hit points equal to half your paladin level plus your charisma modifier, which lasts until the end of that creature's next turn. So... Yeah. It's a weird ability, but it's kind of neat. Um... So champion challenge, each creature of your choice you can see within 30 feet of you must make a wisdom saving throw, on a failed save, a creature can't willingly move more than 30 feet away from you, this effect ends uh, on the creature if you are incapacitated to die, or if you end your turn more than 30 feet away from the creature. Turn the tide, each creature of your choice that you that you can see within 30 feet of you regains hit points, I think, 30 feet regains hit points equal to 1d6 plus half your paladin level. Healing received this way cannot restore a creature beyond half its hit point maximum. It's mostly fine. Whenever a creature within your aura of protection would suffer damage, you need your reaction to cause uh, that creature to, to uh, cause the creature not to take the damage. Instead, you take the damage. So yeah, that's mostly okay as well. Aura of Tenacity, allied creatures with your Aura of Protection gain advantage on saving throws made against the Paralyzed and Stunned conditions. Y you get an extra aura. Look at that. It's neat. It's a kind of shit aura, but like, your, your main aura is actually really good, so it's fine. Grand Sovereign's Allegiance. You gain an additional special reaction you can take once each round. You can use the special reaction only to reduce damage with your Aura of Allegiance feature, and you can't use it on the same turn you take your normal reaction. And then Exalted Champion gives you resistance to all damage, lets you regenerate hit points, and it makes your Aura of Protection into base Paladin Aura of Protection, so that's cool. Oath of Devotion. Hand of Devotion. Whenever you expend hit points from your Leon hands, pull the target against temporary hit points equal to half the hit points expended. Yeah, so that's fine. Hmm. I, I don't think I changed Sacred Weapon. Turn the Unholy. Yeah, I didn't change that either. Aura of Devotion, it's the same as Aura of Courage, except it's on Charmed Creatures instead. Whenever you use one of your channel divinity options, each creature you choose within 30 feet of you gains temporary hit points equal to your paladin level, as long as, it, as long as it can see or hear you. Creature with these temporary hit points can expend them as a bonus action on their turn, regaining temporary hit points equal to the expended amount. Once you have used this feature, you must complete a short or long rest before you may do so again. Yeah, that's cool. Purity of Spirit, you get your gain the benefits of the protection from evil and good spell. This effect is temporarily suppressed by an anti-magic field spell or similar magic. And then Holy Nimbus, I don't think I changed. Oath of Freedom, we literally just did, so I'm going to skim over that. Lead the Charge is still weird as hell, but it is really cool, so... You know. Glorious Advance, whenever you reduce a creature to zero hit points or score a critical hit, you can immediately move up to ten feet. Then you make... Uh, then you can make a weapon attack against a creature within your weapon's range. You can use this feature uh, only once each turn, and only a number of times equal to a charisma modifier, after which you must complete a long rest to do so again. This gives you the... the... the lesser feature for Angry Weapon Master, but makes it somewhat better. Actually, just notably better. Um, but... It does. It doesn't nombo with Grey Weapon Master. Grey Weapon Master can still align with this, which is cool. Inspiring Smite. Immediately after you use your Divine Smite feature, you can use your Channel Divinity to distribute temporary hit points among any number of creatures you choose that can see within 30 feet. Total number of temporary hit points is equal to 2d8 plus your Paladin level divided among the chosen creatures. However, you choose these temporary hit points last for one minute. Peerless Athlete. Yeah, I didn't change that. Aura of Alacrity, you get bonus speed, anyone who starts a turn on your aura gains plus 5 speed. Glorious Defense, whenever a creature is within 10 feet of you is hit by an attack, run, use a reaction. 
you can shield somebody, and if they miss, you can attack the person. That's really cool. Here is advanced. Whenever you score a critical hit against a creature, the target takes additional damage equal to your charisma modifier. Pretty boring. Oh wait, no, hang on. Additionally, when you use your glorious advanced feature, you can use your glorious advanced feature more than once each turn. You regain uh, up to two expended uses of the feature whenever you roll initiative. That's cool. Roll initiative at the at the beginning of combat. There we go. You gain advantage of charisma checks when you make a weapon attack and miss. Yeah, you can just not miss once per turn. And uh, you can use your reaction to reroll saving throws. Oath of Redemption gives you Redeemer's Touch. Basically, just gives you an extra lay on. It just gives you extra lay on hands. You get your Redeemer's Pool. Oh, and it replenishes whenever you short or long rest as well, which is exceedingly good. Um, emissary of peace. You make yourselves better at make yourself better at charisma persuasion checks. Immediately after a creature within thirty feet of you deals damage with an attack against a creature other than you, you can use your reaction to force the attack to make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, the attack takes radiant damage because of the damage it just dealt. Oh yeah, yeah, I didn't change this either. Now, uh, they have the same Order of the Guardian thing as Oath of the Crown, which kind of sucked, but yeah, whatever, it's fine. You can use Channel Divinity twice instead of once. You regain hit points equal to 1d6 plus your half your paladin level if you end your turn in combat with fewer than half your hit points remaining and you aren't incapacitated. Hmm. You have resistance to all damage dealt by other creatures. Whenever a creature hits you with an attack, it takes radiant damage equal to half the damage you take from the attack. Okay. Oath of Treachery gives you Cull the Herd. You gain advantage on melee attack rolls made against uh, any creature that has one or more of its allies within five feet of you. Oh, you can mirror image yourself as a reaction. And then you can uh, you can cult steal somebody. You can you can um, teleport behind you. Nothing personnel, kid. If a hostile creature in the orbit misses you with an attack, you use reaction to force it to wisdom saving throw. Or yeah, aura of treachery. Reroll against somebody else. Cool. Blackguards escape. You can you can stab somebody and then leave. Which is fun. Oh no, no, no. When you are hit. Never mind. Blackened Blade. Oh, you, you gain one baby attack, which does extra damage. Oh, hang on. Whenever your Call the Herd feature grants you advantage on a weapon attack made against a creature, you can manifest a weapon of darkness. Let me go read Call the Herd. Oh, it has a set number of uses, okay. It does a lot of damage, though. This is very, very strong, but it is a 15th level ability, so... Icon of Deceit, straight up, is my favorite ability in the entire game. I love this. This is amazing. This is straight up my favorite thing. It's so cool. Um, Oath of Valor, this is my. This is one of mine. Brilliant Offensive, once each turn, whenever you make a melee atta weapon attack, you can choose to gain advantage on the, on the roll. On a hit, you gain temporary hit once you go to Charisma Modifier plus your Paladin level, which lasts until the start of your next turn. Yeah, okay. Crystal Shield. Valorous Cry. Horror of Valor. Oh, so, yeah, Crystal Shield gives somebody an Arcane Ward for a minute. Give everybody advantage on attack rolls and saving throws until the end of your next turn. Um, you give somebody kind of a shitty Bardic Inspiration die. They have to use it before they make the roll. 
um, but it's free, so, you know, checks and balances and all that. Whenever you use your Divine Smite feature, a creature you choose in 30 feet begins temporary holiday to four times as possible. See, this is, this is an issue because Oath of Glory has this as a channel divinity. I think it's Inspiring Smite. Oh wait, no. They are substantively different, I think. Oath of Valor is very temporary. Blazing Star, whenever you hit a creature with an attack roll affected by your brilliant offensive feature, the target has additional radiant damage equal to your charisma modifier. Cool. And then Beacon of Valor lets you use Crystal Shield without expending uses of your channel divinity. Creatures in your aura protection add your charisma modifier instead of half to seven. Oh, you, you get the you get the same thing that Oath of Redemption gets, which is which is fine. You get the, you get like a little bit of ability overlap. I actually I actually kind of like that. I think I think it can be really cool to have like so. Or is it? No, it's not Oath of Redemption. Is it Oath of Devotion then? No, it's Oath of the Crown. That's it. A little bit of ability overlap sometimes is like a nice pattern thing. Um, like a lot of them get like resistance to all damage as well, so I, I actually kind of like that there's overlap there, surprisingly. That's weird that it's done that though. Your aura brown provides d10s instead of d4s, which is nuts. Oath of Vengeance, Tenets of Vengeance, Lay on Brands, hell yeah. As a bonus action, you can expend pull from your land hands on a hit, takes its radiant damage. Abjure enemy Abjure enemy and Vow of Enmity I did not change. Aura of Aversion. Whenever a hostile creature makes an attack roll within uh, within your aura of protection, roll a d4, subtract the result from that creature's attack roll. This is eh. You know, like this stops being good at like in like tier four when enemies have like a plus 14 to hit. And unless your AC is like 20 or above, they're basically incapable of missing you. But there's a lot of, I'm not sure about this ability, I think. Uh, so I'm, I may red text this to look at it in my own time. Because whilst I don't think it's bad by any means, I think, it's, I think this feature is, it drops off in tier four, but it's mostly very good. It's mostly just like a, you just have to roll so many fucking dice. Like, it's nice the player has to do it instead of the GM have, having to remember. But at the same time, it adds a lot of, um... It adds a lot of awkwardness. In that the DM has said, okay, he makes the attack, you roll the d4. I think what, I, what I'm definitely going to do is I'm going to change the DM rolls it instead. Whenever a creature affected by your Vow of Enmity feature dies, you may apply the Vow to a different creature you see within 30 feet of it, provided you aren't incapacitated. So yeah, this, um, oh, en Enmity Abound, I, I do like, I do like that. It's Enmity Abound, it's supposed to Enemies Abound. I like that. It's a, it's a, it's a funny pun. And then, Avenging Angel. Surprisingly, this is the only Paladin subclass that gives you wings. It's the only one. You would think Devotion would give it to you as well, but it doesn't. And that is something I don't... I do not like the Oath of Devotion. Um, yeah, I really do not... That's one thing I'm definitely going to change. I'm going to change this ability because I do not like it. I, th I think this ability is, is absolute shite. So, that's going to be something I'm going to do. Of, of radiant 
devotion. They should definitely get the Oath of Vengeance kind of, um... Because if there's any of the subclasses that should get wings and don't, it's Oath of Devotion. Like, Oath of Vengeance also makes sense, but... What else does Oath of Vengeance get? For Soul of Vengeance. Or not, uh, no, Avenging Angel. Um... Yeah, any creatures around you get spooked. Against creatures frightened in this way are made with advantage. I, um, oh, where is... Holy Nimbus. That is something, to, yeah, I like that. That's much neater, much tidier. I do like bullet point abilities, because uh, they're usually very simple to digest. Except when they aren't, which they sometimes aren't, because that's, you know, just be like that sometimes, you know. Uh, right. Also, uh, I would like to make it known that I am 100% playing an Oath of Treachery Paladin at the next opportunity that I get. Like, in my home, like, in, like, within my sort of group of friends who largely, you know, play sort of my home version of 5th edition, because we're all used to it, like, that's what we play, I'm playing an Oath of Treachery Paladin, because there's this, there's this, there's, there's this, um, there's just all of these abilities, and then if we if we at all make it to 20th level, Icon of Deceit is fucking sick as hell. I love I love this. It just says you are invisible. Full stop. That is that's some good shit. Some good shit. That like that is even isn't even like the coolest part either, because there's this. It'll make you just Emra cool people, and I love it. I love it so much. It's amazing. Oh, this 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 ability is fantastic. I just, I love Oath of Treachery so much. It's is is easily my favorite uh, of all of them. Like I like Oath of Conquest. Um, you know, I like Oath of Valor because I made it. Like oh, big you know, big fucking surprise. The one he made, he likes. Um, you know, I like Oath of Vengeance, because i played it before, um, and I, I like the flavour. I, I like the edgy paladins, because they're really cool. Because um, pal paladins are just like... They're like... You, 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 you can't play a, like a, a neutral paladin, right? Like, unless you're specifically like Oath of Redemption. Well, not even that. Like, all paladins, every single paladin that exists is some philosophical extreme and it's wonderful and there's so many ways to make them evil it's it's great um basically all of these paladins can be evil even like 
I think the, the only ones that are like inherently good are Oath of Devotion, which is just super boring. Uh, and Oath of the Ancients is kind of like, like, I suppose you could be kind of like a warrior of nature, like you are defiling nature, I'm going to impale you on a spike now. Um, when they're just like, yo man, I just want to build my house. Uh, he's like, well, did you kill a tree for that house? He's like, well, I guess, but I planted more trees so I can kill more trees. He's like, well, I mean, I guess. I was like, well, spike it is for you, my guy. Uh, and he puts him on a spike. Um, Oath of Freedom has infinite capacity for evil. Uh, Oath of Glory, the best, the like, lovable evil. Like, this, this like, dastardly... Uh, you like this this sort of like paragon um, of of but you know a big old narcissist. That's that, that's that's cool. Uh, Oath of Redemption. I'm not sure how you would make that evil, but like I want to see someone do it. Uh, Oath of Treachery is just inherently evil, and that's great. Uh, Oath of Valor is you've got somebody who's like constantly trying to kind of be I don't know I feel like it's um I'm not sure that how, how, how to make them evil in a way that isn't just like oath of glory hmm oath of vengeance is like vengeance is either evil or it's not you know and then oath of the watchers is like I don't know something something edgy probably but um yeah I think this this um Anything else, any other changes, any of that will be things I do in my own time. Because other than that, I think I'm done. Like, I'm just going to have a scan and look for some, you know, some potentially interesting, like, subclass ideas and all that. Because th there's probably some really cool ones. Um, but, you know, I'm going to you know, have a scan around for some cool Paladin Oath ideas. Um, I might, you know, to let it, let us venture to to a dark realm, to the D and D wiki, because uh, I'm not sure if Joe is here at the moment, but I think Joe can attest to the fact that whilst everything on there, almost everything on there, is irredeemable piles of garbage, there's usually some really good inspiration you can find on there, um, like some legitimately really cool stuff, um, like cool ideas. I think it's uh. The d, d wiki, I think I've said before in the one time where I've reviewed some things on there, which I want to do again. I have more things I didn't get to look at in that stream, and I want to go through them. The d, &D wiki is where really cool ideas go to die. Um, because no one provides feedback on the d, &D wiki, nobody learns to be a better designer on the d, &D wiki, they just, you know, shit out something with, like, you know, the, 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 the tiniest little kernel of, like, Oh wow, this is actually really cool. Uh, and then everything, you know, just, just, and everything else is just irredeemable shite. It is, it, it is, it is a wonderful place, but good God, it is it. Just, it's a wonderfully awful place. I think is probably the most, uh, the most, uh, right. I think I need to go to classes and then subclasses, maybe? Ah, here we go. Paladin, here we go. I'll tell you what we don't have. We don't have an aura of, like an, like an oath of knowledge. We don't have like like an oath of scripture. Hmm. Oath of oath of celibacy. <laughs> it's just. I'm not even gonna. I I read 
maybe two sentences of that, and I am not looking at it again, Jesus. Um, I'm, I'm not going to show you guys, because there might be some on, on here. Um, I had to specifically go through and like look for some non yikesy stuff when I was like curating things to look at. Uh, I got some I got some advice from uh, Taron Pounds before I did that stream to a just n not do it. But if you're gonna like specifically go and like thumb through and find things that aren't don't have pictures of ding dongs and titties on them, because there is that on here and uh, Twitch. Uh, Twi Twitch, underst understandably, to a to a degree, doesn't really want that on their platform. Which, you know, as as as, as much as as much as I'd love to stick stick it to to Joffrey B Soup, um, I'm not really interested in getting banned on Twitch. You know, <laughs> it's uh, not not on my list of things I want to be doing today. There's Oath of the Gun. <laughs> <laughs> it's oath of the gun. Okay, it's not even a joke, it's actually serious. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I'm just gonna just gonna skim over that one. <laughs> Oath of Joe. I do kind of like Oath of Knowledge. Oath of Mercy and Oath of Peace. No, those are just kind of here. Oath of Protection. We don't. Oath of Pugnator. What? P Pug. What the? F let me let me let me Google what the fuck that means. It just means fighter. It's literally all in me. <laughs> Please tell me they. <laughs> they have two channel divinities. One of them is to touch a magic weapon, a non magic weapon, and make it magical for an hour, which is very niche and very bad, but at low levels, it does have a use. And the other one is. To just cast to detect magic, which is a spell that paladins can prepare anyway. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, that's that's really sad. That's genuinely. Good God. Okay. So that that is that is actually like. Something, something to potentially consider is 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 a is a genuine like oath of knowledge or oath of, oath of, oh, oath of oath of the scripture. That's cool. That's that sound. That sounds like a a religiousy word or whatever. I don't know. Oath of the scripture. No, no, that doesn't. Oath of the, oath of the scroll. Now that. Th th yes, yes. That's a, that's a name. Knowledge. Was, um, that guy, the knowledge guy, uh, the, the guy who pronounces every syllable in Lamborghini with like the most emphasis possible. Um, that guy, he's an he's an oath of the scroll paladin. What what oath of the scroll is and what it means, no fucking clue. But I'm interested all the same. Ooh, oath of the scroll. Maybe they are specifically good. They can read any scroll. Can read and cast spells from any scroll. Can make a scroll as a channel divinity oh okay yeah so maybe we aren't done with paladin because this is i like this idea a lot this is really cool see the D, &D wiki is good for something um oath of supremacy yikes yikes i'm i hope this 
Oh, no. It's, it's, it's not quite as bad as I expected, but it's still... It's still pretty awful. It's not good. It's not good. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, Oath of the Chalice. That's interesting. What's this? They're just vibe paladins. No, that's dumb. Oath of the Crusader. Like... You get combat. What? You don't. Fuck off. <laughs> it's fucking stupid. Um. Oath of the Hand. I don't know what that means, but it sounds pretty sick. No, it is not very sick at all. It's very boring and doesn't do anything cool at all. Um, Oath of the Harvest? Now, does this mean literally, like, seasons and shit? Or does it mean... It means seasons and shit. It doesn't have anything to do with death. Oath of the Leper. Somebody has played Darkest Dungeon. Oath of the Justicar. Oath of the Nomad, Oath of the Old Ones, uh, Oath of the Reaper, Oath of the Sentinel, Oath of the Templar. Right, let's let's have a look at some of these. Let's search like how well represented is justice. Yeah, it's it's fairly well represented. Um, we don't specifically need a justice-themed one. What's Oath of the Nomad? Uh, a crime. I'm gonna just ignore that. Oath of the Old Ones is fucking stupid. Oath of the Reaper. So, Oath of the Reaper could very specifically be, I want to root out something specific from the world. Is that just Oath of Vengeance, but with extra steps? Mm. I think Oath of the, like, the Reaper, Oath of... What's Oath of the Sentinel? Discipline, Mastery, Vigilance. Uh, no. I kind of like the idea of like an oath of oath of the reaper or something like that where they're like I'm going to root out a specific form of evil that I choose from the world you know I'm going to go out and I'm going to destroy all fiends or I'm going to destroy all fey or destroy all monstrosities or, or something because that's kind of cool um maybe, maybe like when you gain the class you can choose a creature type like you can choose Maybe you choose, like, humanoid. You're like, 
I, I hate other mortal beings, I will destroy them, or whatever. Kind of get like like a ranger paladin, kind of say, where, where your favored enemy actually gives you an ability that does something, as opposed to just not doing that at all. Um, yeah, I think, I think, um... So maybe, maybe we aren't done. Maybe, maybe we aren't, maybe, maybe there is more, there is, there is more cool shit to be, to be done. More cool shit to be made. I shall sit and I shall think upon it over the course of the week. Um, and if I find cool shit, then by all means I shall come back and, um, and it's, Oath of the Scroll is getting made one way or another. Like, that shit's fucking awesome. There's, um, hate on a specific creature type. Root out your enemies. Aura that your allies re-roll damage. That's cool. Just had a thought for that. That's a cool ability. I like it. I think Oath of the... Hang on, I'm going to put name might be very stupid. Because it might be very stupid. But yeah, I like I like Paladin thematically. Uh, the reason I'm reworking it is because I hate the way it works mechanically. I think it fucking sucks. Um, I've explained this before uh, in in past vods or whatever. Um, and the, there are vods I have. I have. Hang on, is this the command? I don't remember. No, it isn't. Or maybe. It is, the bot is just not working. I would just, it, 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 Oh, Twi Twitch's API is down. My, 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 my bot isn't working. I did not know this. Oh, well. But either way, uh, I'm going to uh, sign off now and probably go raid somebody. Never mind, no, I'm not. There's no one to raid. I'll, I'll go to a scan, see if there's any, like, people doing homebrew. I don't think there is, because there mostly never is. Um, there, it, it is very, very rare that there are people doing doing homebrew stuff. It's mostly people doing live play, which I would like to do, um, but I wouldn't want to run a show myself. I DM enough for my home games, I'd want to actually be a player. Only problem is, is I don't like the base game. I think it's, I think it's kind of shit. Well, that's not that's not true at all. I just don't like the classes from the base game. I think they're kind of shit. Um, so, yeah, I'm kind of in this limbo. If I don't really want to DM a live play game, game, um, and I also don't really have anybody to DM a live play game for, um, and I wouldn't want to. I would want to play in one, but I wouldn't want to play the base game, so I'm kind of, you know, kind of just boned, really, but it's fine. It's not really a big deal. Uh, yeah, everyone's just doing live play, which is fine. Uh, we, we shall, uh, shall head off instead, because I've got a game to go to in a couple minutes. Um, so yeah, it gives me some time to go grab a drink and the sort. But yeah, thanks for sticking around, folks. Um, I will endeavor to stream some Pokemon at some stage on Wednesday, probably in the evening. Probably not going to be a particularly long stream. Probably start at, like, 5 and finish at, like, you know, like, 7, 8 o'clock. Um, and then I should be streaming as normal on Sunday. Uh, maybe finishing Platinum on Sunday. If I, if I stream on Wednesday... There is a not unreal chance I will finish on Sunday, but that really does depend. I don't know. But, um, yeah, uh, regardless, I will, I will definitely, I will most definitely be streaming, um, on Sunday. And I will either stream Wednesday or Friday, depending on how I feel, because I realize my Friday is open. It usually isn't, but it is, it just so happens to be this week. So I will see how I feel with that. Either way, thank you very much for sticking around. Uh, next time I look at this, I'm going to look at Oath of the Scroll and Oath of the Reaper and probably be done with Paladin. Just, like, period. Um, all going well. But yeah, thank you very much. 
I will see you guys later.